Hi students, so welcome back to our series of super quick revision. We are on to our cellular manufacturing. Now before I'll start away with this topic, let me try to tell you that in your module there is a topic called as lean systems and three chapters that we all are doing. The last one, this one as well as the next one are part of the lean systems. Lean systems are there for what? You want to become profitable? You want to become better? Okay, avoid, uh, avoid the wastages. Now, wastages could be of various types. So, our previous chapter of TPM basically told one thing, maintain the machines in such a way so that there are no un unscheduled stops. There is no wastage in form of time. Okay, that was one thing. Our next chapter, that is just-in-time system, focuses on what? There should not be any wastage in terms of excess inventory. Okay, so therefore, just-in-time system is there for that. This chapter is there for what? This chapter, in this case, is there only for one thing. That is, there should not be any unnecessary movement of the materials as well as the workers who are working in the factory. You try to organize your factory in such a way that the movement of the workers is as less as possible. We try to have the staff as efficiently as uh, as efficient as possible and the goods are produced the fastest. Okay, that is whatever your cellular manufacturing objective is there. Imagine something like this. Uh, you have five products that the company makes P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. There are in this particular case five machines whereby the products get manufactured M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. Okay. Suppose P1 requires processing over here and over here. P2 requires a processing over here and over here. P3 requires a processing say over here, say over here, so on and so forth. So what is our objective? Our objective is that we want to be grouping the machines. We want to be grouping the machines in such a way that the machines which are going to be producing the common parts are always held the closest. So therefore, Example, it is something like this. Suppose we start to be realizing that uh, this is entire company. Okay, this is entire company. Now, if I just spread like, you know, M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5, okay, machine across five places in my factory. And I start to be making product P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Suppose P1 product first goes inside M1. After that, it goes inside M3. So, therefore, once the product is produced over here, then the workers will carry it over here. Okay. After that, in this case, at the same time, P2 is required in M2 and M4. So, therefore, P2 in this particular case is required. So, first of all, P2 will go over here. Then it will go over here. Oh, uh, sorry. Then in this case, it will be going over here. Now, all these things might look very simple. But then if you try to be imagining this particular thing on, on slightly a larger scale, there will be lot of movement of the workers from one machine to another. There will be lot of WIP inventory moving from one place to another. Example, P1, it is produced from M1. But then it is not fully complete. It is your WIP stock. Now, such WIP stocks will be there across all the places here. So, why not to do something? Why not to try to have a system whereby your WIP stocks are less? That gives me another concept called a single piece flow. Single piece flow actually means what? It means that when you start to produce a product, okay, finish it off till the time it is fully produced. That is, do not try to stop the production in middle for any reason. That is the concept of single piece flow. Single piece flow is a concept that is now worldwide very famous. Whenever you start the production, ensure that the production is finished on a regular basis only. That is, there are no stops in middle. But for that, one thing that is very important that M1 and M3 machines have to be very close to each other. Okay, now if that particular thing can be done, then the moment the product gets produced from M1, it will directly go inside M3. In that also there are various uh, systems that are possible. Example, one of the systems, it could be there, that is, uh, you try to bring M1 and M3 quite close to each other. Okay, so therefore you have M1 over here. So, M3 you try to put over here and try in this case to be as close as possible. In that, if suppose like you know, they cannot be that close for XYZ reason, then in that case, two options. First, in this case, there will be workers over here. There will be workers over here. Uh, whenever the goods are produced from M1, they will manually carry it to M3. That is one thing. Uh, that is going to be called as a manual system. You can have a semi-automatic system in form of the conveyor belts. Conveyor belts, I think you all must have seen in life. 
which like you know it is uh, similar to the escalators that are there in the airport so therefore like you know the goods which will be getting produced from here directly will get transferred to m3 through those conveyor belts over there so therefore if you're going to be doing that then your dependence upon the workers is going to be quite less and then m1 and m3 will be called as cluster number one okay now our aim in this particular chapter is what that let's try to make independent clusters let's try to have clusters in such a way such that those clusters which produce the similar products are always kept together what does that particular thing mean suppose in this case m1 is there m3 is there and suppose m5 is there okay only these particular three products produce say p1 p3 and p4 okay then we would like to arrange all these three machines okay together so therefore like you know production can happen faster in that also in case you do have an option then we say you try to arrange them in a u form okay u form means m1 over here say m3 over here and apart from that m5 over here so therefore you try to arrange them in this particular manner so therefore there is one supervisor who can try to supervise all these particular three machines okay if they are arranged in a single line like this okay it'll become quite difficult in this case to try to see all of them you know you all can always try to imagine like this suppose we are in a class right now okay suppose there are 300 students in our batch okay suppose i am standing over here okay and then there are 300 students like this it'll be very difficult for me ever to try to supervise those particular 300 students i'll keep on looking like this okay so arranging them in a line is a problem okay if you arrange them like this it is again a problem okay i'll not be able to see the students who are at back okay 300 students i'll not be able to see i think most of them behind okay so therefore what could be a better option like we have in our classes so therefore you try to arrange them in a certain manner so therefore most of the students are visible to me apply the same concept to a factory whereby you try to arrange the machines in such a way so that one supervisor can visually see all these particular machines now that will ensure that number of people who are required to supervise the machines will be quite less that is one thing that will also ensure like you know that these particular workers okay these particular kind of supervisors get a sense of empowerment they try to be thinking that they can handle more number of machines okay by themselves only so therefore it's always better this is a concept of cell of uh, cellular manufacturing whereby it is actually part of something called as group technology group technology is what we try to combine the machines together so therefore there is no unnecessary movement of materials and no unnecessary movement of people as such okay it tries to avoid these wastages by trying to have an organization in such a way so that the movement is minimized of the workers and of the materials what i've written in summaries over here okay that is whatever i am trying to be reading cellular manufacturing is a lean way okay uh, to enhance the productivity by improving or uh, reducing that we will see the performance in the context of time and the motion involved in the production so indirectly we are trying to improve the performance how by reducing the amount of motion that is involved okay cellular manufacturing is an application of group technology in manufacturing in which all or portion of firms manufacturing system has been converted into manufacturing cells what what do you mean by cell it is basically cell is group of machines okay so therefore this could be one cell for us okay cell can also be called as a cluster for the purpose of this chapter okay then further here it is important to know that a manufacturing cell is a cluster of machines or processes located in close plug, uh, proximity and has dedicated to the manufacturing of family of parts so family of parts means your products okay so therefore these are those particular machines uh, that produce certain type of products okay example in my particular case like you know that uh, m1 and m3 were producing p1 as such okay so therefore that particular thing further now <clears throat> further what is being told over here how does uh, cellular manufacturing help this can be asked in form of theory first it reduces the setup by using family tooling and sequencing see if suppose like you know your m1 and m3 machines will be situated close to each other we know that once a product passes through m1 it has to be going towards m3 so therefore we would try to have such systems whereby we can set up both the machines together 
enables a single piece flow that is one thing that i have told you there will be very less wip stock over here okay same point it leads me to the next thing reduces the wip stock fourth better use of human resources and heightened sense of employee participation so that is whatever i told you better scheduling and easier to control and automate in long run in long run you all will understand that might be say 20 or 30 years from now everything will come under the automation most of the factories in this particular world are going to be running with the help of machines at that time your cellular manufacturing will take a forefront whereby it will become very important to combine those particular machines like you know that uh, produce certain group of units okay that will help to produce much more as compared to whatever it is being done currently okay further Increased use of the equipment and machinery, hence reduced investment on machinery and investment uh, and equipment. Now, basically what happens, we are going to be optimum, we are going to be using our machines because there will be no uh, unnecessary uh, movement of the materials and of the workers. So, therefore, machines in this particular case, the moment they produce, then the product will go inside the next machine. So, therefore, machines will keep on working, keep on working. The utilization will be far better. So overall, the ROIs that you are going to be getting will be far, far, far better. So therefore, if you want the same return, but with lesser amount of investment, that is also possible then in that particular case. See, either you increase the return, that itself means you are trying to reduce the investment. So therefore, ultimately, if you will group the machines based upon the cellular technology, then in that particular case, automatically the number of machines that you all will require will be far lesser. Okay, now. Further, different types of machine cell designs. The first one in this particular case is nothing but group machine cell with manual handling. Your manual handling means, as I told, means there will be workers over here. The examples that I had given over here. So, therefore, say that we try to combine M1, M3 and M5. Once a product is produced from M1, it is manually carried to M3. Those will be your manual systems. Okay. Second in this particular case will be your... Uh, Semi-integrated handling consisting of one or more machine used collectively to one or more family parts and uses a mechanical handling system such as a conveyor belt to move the cells from one place to another or from one machine to another. So therefore, there will be conveyor belts over here. Something like as I told the escalators which are there. You can try to search any particular video on YouTube whereby like you know you will start to understand how do conveyor belts they carry the goods from one place to another. In every big factory there will be a fund of conveyor belts in this particular case. Okay, then next. Next in this particular case. Now this is something like you know uh, obviously not be there as part of our syllabus but just as a theory it has been mentioned flexible manufacturing system is highly automated system or a highly automated machine cell in group technology that combines automated processing stations with fully integrated material handling system these are very advanced machines if you are going to be having a flexible system those machines itself like you know they try to find out like you know that which product should be sent where up and so on so therefore at that time the manual handling is not there automatically like you know the software tries to configure what is the best way to be producing now that is something that we are not going to be tackling okay now this is your this particular part how to find out in this case which machine should be uh, clubbed together now this entire thing i like to demonstrate the question only that will be far 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 better for us okay so therefore just a demonstration before we all proceed we organize the machine suppose like you know this is first cluster this is a second cluster okay now in this particular cluster some products will get produced in this particular cluster some other products will be getting produced so therefore as such like you know all the workers who work in this cluster need not be going over here all the workers which are uh, over here need not be going over here so therefore this is one independent cluster this is a second kind of uh, independent cluster and these clusters will be working in absolutely an independent way. So therefore, workers of this cluster only need to be moving in this particular area. Same way, the workers in the second cluster only need to be moving in this much amount of area. Okay. And we try to be saying in that also, if suppose like, you know, you can try to arrange the machines in a U manner, it will be always better. Okay. Although like you, there are various other forms also. There is a form of W also. There is a form of uh, M also. But U being the most popular as such. So that is whatever your module says. Okay. Now, in our question number one, what we had to be doing, I'm trying to tell you all right now. You have... P101, okay, this is one product, second product, third product, fourth product, fifth product, okay, 
फर्स्ट मशीन सेकेंड मशीन थर्ड मशीन फोर्थ मशीन फिफ्थ मशीन Now this particular product requires processing in two machines M2 and M13. P104 requires in two machines M7 and M13A. P105 requires in M sorry P104 uh, requires in M7 and M13A. P105 requires in M13A only. P107 requires in M13 and M15. P108 requires in M7. Now, when I did this particular question in the class, no, I asked you all only first. You all can try to be thinking. If you like, you know, don't know the procedure also. It's actually quite uh, obvious. In this entire, like, you know, there are five machines, there are five products. Try to be thinking there could be two independent clusters in such a way that people of one cluster need not be moving to the other cluster okay you can pause the video over here and try to think for a minute like you know that what we all can do so that these entire five machines are clubbed into two clusters okay try to be thinking it's very easy although there's a system for it also okay but being like you know only five machines so actually you can try to configure it out okay uh think it yourself by pausing now Chalo. So, in case you all have done it, then it is all fine. In case you all have not, what we can try to be seeing? See, M2 machine and M13 machine have to be together because P101, once it goes out from M2, it has to be entering M13. So, therefore, M2 and M13 will always be together. Now, see, M13, P107 in this case is also required. Okay, so in M13, P107 product also gets made. So therefore, P107 and P101 have to be together in one cluster. But P107 also requires processing in M15. I think so with this, I have tried to finish it off. I think so, M2, M13 and M15 can be forming as one cluster. Try to be thinking these particular three machines and these particular two products have nothing to do with the other two products and uh, sorry with the other two machines and other three products okay so therefore in round shape whatever i have done all those particular things will be one cluster although i'll give you the procedure for it also okay but in case you all think sir what will be the other cluster whatever is left see m7 in this particular case requires sorry will process P104 and will process P108. So, therefore, both these things will be together as such. Okay. But P104 will also require M13A. And M13A in this particular case, in that particular machine, even P105 is required. Okay. So, therefore, if you start to be thinking, all the reds in square or in rectangle can be one cluster and all the blue and all the blues which are there in circle all those particular things can be or one cluster this will be our final answer in any case although i says don't observe it okay there is a certain procedure if we follow it will automatically get arranged in that particular order now what is that that is called as rank algorithm method now rank algorithm method means what okay now there is a procedure that has been uh, developed is also called as king's algorithm whereby we try to be converting the things we try to follow a procedure and automatically things will get arranged into independent clusters okay now what is to be done as such listen now there are few steps for it first we give binary weights to each of the column 1 2 4 8 and 16 in all the five columns as such okay now what does it mean the binary weights means 2 raised to 1, sorry, 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3. Okay, these are called as the binary weights. 2 raised to 1 will be assigned to the last column. So, therefore, hereby we write down 1, hereby we write down 2, we write down 8, sorry, we write down 4, we write down 8, we write down 16. Okay, so therefore, if suppose like, you know, in this question, there are 5 columns, we are stopping till 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to 4. If suppose there will be one other column, then there will be 2 raised to 5 also as such. Okay. Now, that is one thing, that is one thing. Now, once you will do that, then in that particular case, now we gave or we assigned binary weights to each column. So, then what is to be done? We try to find out decimal equivalent over here. How do you find out the decimal equivalent? Now, that's very simple. See, imagine that this 16 is over here. Okay. Imagine that this 16 is also over here. This 8 is also over here. This 8 is over here. This 4 is over here. This 2 is over here, this 2 is over here and this 1 is over here, okay. 
total up row wise whatever thing comes. So therefore 16 was over here and nothing else. So therefore total is 16. Over here it was 8, over here it was 1. So therefore in this case the total is 9. Same way it was 16 over here and 2. So therefore this will be 18. There will be 8 over here, there will be 4 over here. So therefore 12. And I guess there will be 2 over here. Okay, this is nothing but your decimal equivalent. That is whatever I have written over here. Okay, so in this particular case, once you all do that, then uh, what you will have to be doing, whatever is the highest out of them, you give them rank as 1. Then the next one rank as 2, rank as 3, rank as 4 and then rank as 5. That's it. Okay. So your first matrix is all, all together done. Now what is to be done? You do one thing, rearrange these particular rows in the order of rank. So therefore which was the first one? This one. Okay. So therefore in our next matrix if you all see M13 has start to come in first. Okay. Then in that particular case, M2 has come in next, okay, because that was the second rank, so on and so forth, okay. So you remake this particular entire matrix, okay. Once you will remake this particular entire thing, then what is to be done? Then reverse. Whatever you did column wise first, now you will start to do the row wise. So therefore, in this case, start to give the binary weights, okay. So therefore, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 rows as such, okay. So therefore, start to be giving the binary weights 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to 4. So therefore, we gave 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16, okay. Once you all did that particular thing, so therefore, then what happened? This 16 in this case, you copy over here row wise, okay. Then 8 will come over here. Then after that 4 will come over here. It will come over here also. 2 will come over here. It will come over here also. And then 1 will come over here. And then start to do the totals column wise over here. So therefore 16 plus 8 will make it 24. Then after that 4 plus 2 will make it 6. So on and so forth. Once you will do that. Then whatever is the highest decimal equivalent. Give that particular thing rank as 1. So therefore 24 was the first one. Then 17 was rank 2. Then after that rank 3, rank 4 and rank, rank 5. Once this particular thing is done, now it is time for you to be rearranging the columns based upon your ranks over here. So therefore, this was first. So therefore, in any case, it will remain first in the next matrix also. Okay. Then second one in this particular case was this. So uh, therefore, you can try to check it out. 107 becomes next, so on and so forth. Now, you keep on doing this particular thing. Keep on doing, keep on doing. To keep on doing means... Again, you will do one thing, give your binary weight a uh, column wise. So therefore, 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. 16 in this particular case will come over here. 16 in this particular case will come over here. 8 in this case will come over here. 4 will come over here. 4 will come over here. 2 will come over here. And 1 will be coming over here. Okay. Once this particular thing is done, start to do the totals in this particular case row wise. Okay. So therefore, 16 plus 8 is 24. 16 will be coming over here. Of that, 6 will be coming over here. 5 will be coming over here. And then in this case, 8 over here uh, will be coming over here. Okay. Then in that particular case, you start to arrange them again in the order of rank. So therefore, this is the highest rank number one. This is the next one. Then after that, rank number three, rank number four and rank number five. Okay. Once you all do that, start to rearrange the rows. So therefore, this will be again coming first only. This will be coming second. Then M15 will be coming third. And that's what in this case we all have done. You make this particular new matrix. Okay. Once this thing is done, again, ditto the same particular way. You start to give the binary weights in this case to each of the rows. 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. Once we all did that, then in that case, you assign 16 over here, 16 over here. You assign in this case, uh, 8 over here. You assign 4 over here. You assign 2 over here, 2 over here, 1 over here, 1 over here. And then you start to be doing the totals in this particular ca case, uh, column wise. Now, once we all did that, now listen very carefully. Now, once we all did that particular thing, I'm rubbing this off. Okay. We did all the totals and then we gave the ranks. Ranks in this particular case, the first column had the rank of 1. Second column had the rank of 2. Third column had the rank of 3. Fourth column had the rank of 4. Fifth column had the rank of 1. Your rows were already arranged in the order of ranks after this. Okay. So, therefore, rows were already in perfect order. Now, columns have also come in perfect order. Your sum is over. Okay. That's it. That's the only thing that we all did as such. Okay. And once we all did that, we started to realize, sir, we can see those two independent clusters. M13, M2, M15. Just try to think that is whatever I told right in the beginning also. I think I had tried to circle it up. I think I have deleted those circles. In this particular case, uh, 
just a sec i think i told you or not i don't remember but i think we had made those circles and those rounds okay so in n that was in any case of final answer so therefore m13 m2 and m15 okay these three machines will be club that will be producing p101 and p102 uh, p107 so therefore this particular thing will be nothing but one independent cluster so your cluster number 1 will be consisting of three machines which three machines m13 m2 and m15 whereby two products will start to be getting made which two products p101 p107 and then in that particular case you have your second cluster in your second cluster there will be two machines over here which will start to be producing your three products okay exactly that conclusion we try to write down over here two ways of presentation so therefore this is your cluster number 1 consist of three machines and two parts cluster number 2 consist of two machines and those three parts okay green and yellow i have tried to highlight in case you want to do the presentation like that you can in case you don't want to be doing then you are cell one okay your parts over here your machines over here and this will be your cell two as such okay your parts over here and then in that particular case your machines over here job is all together done okay that was your question number 1 okay question number 2 exactly was of the same particular type except only one small thing that is the number of columns in this case were 6 so therefore 2 raised to 0 means 1 will be coming 2 raised to 1 2 raised to 2 2 raised to 3 2 raised to 4 and 2 raised to 5 will be coming over here that's it okay so uh if i will try to write down the exact numbers okay this will be in this case 1 this will be 2 this will be 4 this will be 8 this will be 16 and this particular thing will be 32 and accordingly in that particular case we start to be doing exactly in the same way now see over there no we keep on doing we keep on doing i have written exactly you all have solved these particular things so therefore there is nothing much except see once your rows and columns get perfectly arranged in the order no okay then in that particular case this was a final matrix whereby rows and columns had been arranged in the order so therefore in that particular case see what did we say this is one cluster this is a second cluster now just before i forget somebody might always be thinking sir why we write down one over here this one actually denotes that each and every part will require the same amount of time in each and every machine in reality it might not happen so in reality <coughs> situation might become slightly more complicated but i think for exams they'll not bring out those situations okay now see so your first cluster in this particular case consists of your two machines okay mf and md and they will be producing in this particular case your which particular products p1 p2 and p4 that is whatever i have written over here okay then in that case your second cluster will consist of these particular three machines okay and will be producing which particular parts here p5 p6 p3 okay sorry these three machines i have written over here and these particular three parts i have written over here okay but there was one problem one problem was what c p4 in this particular case we all have written as part of our cluster number 1 in yellow in yellow okay but you all will understand p4 also requires processing in mc and mc is there in which particular cluster so second cluster okay if it is there in second cluster in that particular case then what to do yaar okay then in that particular case listen very carefully then in that particular case what should be done we say one very simple thing that means there will be some amount of intercell movement that itself means what that this cluster and this cluster will not be independent why because p4 first of all will require processing in mf okay mf is there in your cluster number 1 in the yellow cluster but then in this particular case after that it has to be processed inside mc beta but mc is there in which particular cluster it is there in the green cluster so therefore there will be some amount of intercell movement that means these two clusters will not be completely independent by themselves okay we will have to take the goods we will have to take p4 from cluster number 1 to cluster number 2 so therefore its processing can happen now there are lot of ways to be avoiding such kind of intercell movement okay but then those ways also might be costly example one of the ways you can start to be redesigning your product 
P4 so that it does not require MC at all. If that thing can be done, then nothing like it. In any case, if you can be doing that, then two clusters will completely become independent. Now, for that, some technical knowledge will be required that what can be done so that P4 does not require MC at all. Okay, now that would be one thing. Second, second option that I can try to be thinking in this particular case could be that, uh, sir, do one small thing. Whatever processing of P4 happens in MC node, you outsource it. Do not do that particular thing within your factory. That itself may mean that this particular kind of an allocation will go away. So therefore, then the problem will again be going third. Third, what you all can be doing, as per me, that is also a good idea, although will require cost. You have MC machine, which is there in cluster two. Purchase one more machine MC in cluster number one. Okay. So therefore, then in that case, problem will get resolved. But in any case for that, you'll have to be incurring your capital cost. Okay. These are the options that are there. Now, if such kind of a thing happens in exams, about this, you got to be writing a note like this, the way that I've uh, given to you. Same note I've written over here also. But these are the options that will be there with you. In case you will see that the cells are not entirely independent. In our question number one, no. Cells were completely independent of each other. This was complete cell, which like, you know, this is like, you know, group of the machines, which is completely independent. Yellow and green have got nothing to do with each other. No common column, no common row column, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. But in this case, there was a common part over here. And that is why a note has to be written for that particular thing. That note I've printed over here. I'm just trying to be reading that. It is essential to understand that cells are not totally independent since P4, which is a member of cell 1, yes, P4 is a member of cell 1, needs processing in MC, but MC belongs to cell number 2. So, some amount of intercell movement or change will take place in this particular situation. In general, these moves may become unavoidable in real life circumstances. There are various alternate ways of eliminating the intercell movement in a cellular manufacturing like redesigning the part so that machine belongs to the other cell is no longer required for processing. That means you write to you try to change your manufacturing base in such a way that P4 does not require MC at all. That could be one way that I told. Second, in this particular case, you subcontract the part means you outsource it, don't manufacture it yourself. Third, in this case, adding one more machine, okay, MC in cell number one. If you can be doing that in that particular case, the things will be done. Out of all, it is left upon to the company to try to think which is the best one for them. Cell designers should evaluate the consequence of each of these and take suitable measures or ways to eliminate, sorry, to minimize these moves. Okay, so you have given the three options. After that, it is left upon to the company. Okay, this was your cellular manufacturing. Now, this was new thing that was added by ICA later on. Okay, but it is quite easy as such. If you get a question like this, I think it should be a gift from the institute to you all. I'll see you all in the next lecture. Okay, bye. Take care.